Winnie the Pooh. I stepped out of my car and waved goodbye to my mom. She waved back and then drove off. I released a sigh and turned around to face the other kids at the stop. They were jittering and chatting as usual. And when they saw me, they smiled and waved. I waved and smiled back. Suddenly, they were not smiling anymore. A mixed expression of worry and fright was settled on each of their faces. They were all looking past me, at something behind me. I turned around to see what they were looking at, although I already knew. He was back. Standing directly across the street, stock still, a ratty red t-shirt stopping just underneath the chest, exposing a bulbless yellow stomach. There was fur missing in some places and it appeared to be soaking wet, but it was not dripping. He was extremely dirty and his beady eyes were extremely dark. He stared back at us. His large paw was wrapped around the stop sign. He looked like a little kid, like us, waiting for the school bus. If it weren't for his size and the fact that he didn't have a drawn-on smile, we would have not found his presence so unsettling. It would be comforting for us that the low sized version of our favorite cartoon character was watching over us. Like our very own guardian angel, but he was no angel. There was something off about him, and he wasn't friendly. He only stared. Every time no adults are around, he shows up, slowly walking towards the stop sign. One huge paw in front of the other. The movements were natural. It didn't seem practice. This notion is the reason why every time the bus arrives, we all shuffle onto the bus, breaking out into an elaborate debate about whether or not it was man in a costume or an actual Winnie the Pooh brought to life. That's what we called him, Winnie the Pooh. We had our debates every day, each day. They got more lively until that one day when everything went wrong. We just got onto the bus, peering out of the windows just in time to see Winnie disappearing around the corner. We were all shocked down to our core. Recently, Winnie has been leaving the bus stop increasingly late. Usually, he leaves two minutes before the bus stop arrives, but now he just stays and watches us as we get onto the bus before leaving. It freaks us out. We believe he's becoming more comfortable with being seen by adults, and one day he'll feel comfortable enough to approach us. This made us break into a new debate about whether or not we should tell our parents, or if some of us should approach them ourselves. We should just do it. We need to stop acting like babies, man and woman up, and just see what he wants, Evan said. That's stupid. That's the most stupid thing I ever heard. You're one of the white kids that gets killed at the beginning of horror movies, Penelope said, who's also white. You're stupid, and you're white too, so shut your face. Plus, no one even asked you, Evan replied. Well, I'm black, and I agree with Evan, so eat it, Penelope, Jason shouted. He and Evan exchanged an elaborate handshake. They had been best friends since birth, so they naturally agreed with each other. Jason, what does eat it even mean? Like, are you telling me to eat? Like, what are you telling me to eat? Penelope said. I don't know. I heard my brother say it. So eat it, Penelope. Jason laughed. While he and Evan shared another elaborate handshake. A different one this time. Why don't we just vote on it? I offered. I was tired of hearing them argue. They argue every day. Yes, Alex is right. Let's vote, like proper adults would. Penelope smiled at me. I rolled my eyes. Alex suggested it, and he should tally up the votes. We're going to write what we want to do on papers, and then hand them over to him, Evan said. Or, 
and glared at Evan. We can get over this quickly by raising our hands when I say the two options. Everyone murmured in agreement. Okay, great. So I clapped my hands, getting them to settle down. Now, who votes for us telling our parents? Five out of the eight of us raised our hands, including Penelope and I. All right, no need to announce the other option because the majority rules we tell our parents tonight. I smiled at everyone, happy to finally have gotten this over with. Um, no. No, I don't want to do that. I want to approach that thing. Heaven spoke. Actually, Evan, it may be better for us to tell our parents, just in case. When he is pretty creepy, Jason said. Fine, Evan said. He made a face at Jason and turned to stare out of the window, effectively letting us know the conversation was over. We finally got to school, and the day went on as usual. For some reason, I kept thinking everything was not fine. The next morning, everyone arrived at the bus stop, me of course arriving late. There was something wrong, because Winnie was already there. Mom! Mom! Look! Look over there! Do you see him? I pointed at Winnie. Slowly but surely, his head turned until he was looking in my direction. He was staring at me through the back window. See what, honey? My mom turned to look and frowned. Sweetheart, I already told you. I don't have to stop at the stop sign unless it's on my side. What? First of all, I already know that. I'm not stupid. Second of all, don't you see what's next to the sign? I pointed again and more forcefully this time. As if I could point her into seeing what I see. There's nothing there. Are you feeling all right? She placed her hand on my forehead, concerned I shook it off upset. The bear I told you about last night is standing right next to the stop sign, I yelled, exasperated. Mom chuckled. Yes, yes, you and your bear. All right, sweetie, I love you. But I've got to go to work. She shooed me out of the car, still chuckling. Don't forget to tell the bear. I said hi. I closed the door and she sped off. Confused, I slowly walked to my friends. They were staring at Winnie again. Evan was a little bit away from us, staring hard at it. Hey guys, when you told your parents about Winnie, did they believe you? I asked them. Everyone shook their heads no. I nodded, defeatedly, and sat down on the sidewalk. It was silent for a few moments, us staring at Winnie, him staring back at us. Suddenly, Evan looked at us, smirked, and then started crossing the street. I'm doing it, your plan didn't work, which means my plan will. If you want to come with me, then do it. If not, then eat a brick. Come on, Jason. We all turned to look at Jason, and he looked back at us, then at Winnie, then at Jason. No, man, I'm not doing it. This is crazy. Stranger danger. No, no, no. Evan backed away and then broke out into an all sprint in the direction of his house. He lived pretty far away, but he was very fast. He would be home in no time. We all should have left with him but we stayed put. Curiosity was getting the best of us. We wanted to see how Winnie would react. Evan hesitated, but then shrugged and crossed the street entirely. When he reached Winnie, he stood about two steps away from him, very close. We saw his mouth move, but we could not hear the question he asked. Winnie didn't acknowledge his presence. He just kept staring at us. We could see Evan becoming increasingly annoyed, but Winnie still ignored him. 
Then we heard it. It was a gargle. And judging from our distance, we shouldn't have been able to hear it. We looked at Evan and noticed him fidgeting like he was about to barf. He was struggling to keep his mouth closed, but it was obvious he was failing. And his mouth opened. Blood and something long and pink hit the ground. Evan's eyes were bugging out and his body was slightly slumped over. Winnie was still staring at us as he slowly lowered himself to the long pink thing. His large paw wrapped around the pink thing twice, stretching it out a bit more. Evan gurgled and choked, causing more blood to gush out. Winnie stood up again. He showed us a pink thing, which we could now see was Evan's tongue. Using Evan's tongue as some sort of leash, Winnie started walking away with Evan slowly shuffling behind him, leaving a trail of blood. Soon they were gone. We were all standing still, shocked. We could not believe our eyes. We couldn't cry. We couldn't speak. We couldn't do anything. When the bus pulled up in front of us, we just got on it. The bus driver asked us about Jason, but we just shook our heads. We didn't even notice that he did not ask about Evan. I walked over to my seat, feeling empty inside, and yet I couldn't even react. I just watched my friend get taken and presumably murdered by something, and yet I couldn't even react or do anything to show or feel pain. I sat down in my seat and looked out of the window. The tears came pouring down when I saw the spotless sidewalk. <laughs>